Hello, everybody, and welcome to Google Drive in under five. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Google Calendar and giving you a brief walking tour of all the features that are in there. You can see that we are here in Google Calendar. You can, of course, find that by going to calendar.google.com, and it is set up in four simple to use quadrants here. Over here on the left, we have our create button. We have our month calendar. And we have two sections here, one for the calendars that we own or have editing access to. And we have a section here for other calendars, things that we might be subscribed to or perhaps colleagues of ours that we want to check their calendar out. Of course, in the center here, we have our main calendar where we can look at it as a day, week, month, four days, and agenda view. And we'll break this down and show you how to make this a little bit easier on the eyes. Over here on the left side, we have our more and we have our settings panel. And this is where you can customize everything about our Google Calendar. And then finally, the last part here, we have our tasks list. And our tasks list is going to be able to be seen if we come over here to our my calendar list and we toggle on and off tasks. So let's dive in here and learn how to create something. I'm going to go to week view. And there's several different ways of creating calendar events. The easiest is to simply drag out a range. And that is going to bring you two different dialogue options here. One, we have events. And one, we have appointment slots. Now, if you're not looking at this on a Google Apps for Education, maybe Google Apps for Work, Small Business... You're actually only going to be seeing events and one more option over here, but it's not going to be appointment slot. So we have uh, events and we have appointments, and you can see that they are slightly different. So we're going to create an event, and we're going to say breakfast with mom when it's automatically going to be placed for today at 9 to 10 as we have drug it out, and I'm going to hit create. And you can see here now we have our event. If I want to change this, I can simply click on this and it's going to open up our dialog box. So here we are when we want to edit our event. We can, of course, change this if we want to. We can, of course, add to it, delete it, whatever. We can select the time zone. It automatically pulls the time zone that we're in. But if mom is in another time zone, we can certainly do that. We can say that this is an all-day event, and you can notice that the time has shifted a little bit. Or we can say this is a repeated event. Let's say that every single Tuesday at 9 o'clock, we want to have breakfast with mom. We want to repeat this every three weeks, which doesn't mean every week for three weeks. That means every third week, this will put something in here. So I generally leave this to one. I want this to end after, oh, let's say that I want this to end after four occurrences. Or we can simply say, I want this to end on a certain date. And that's really, really helpful if you're creating something, let's say for a full school year calendar. I generally say, I want things to end on July 1st or whatever that close date is. And so that way it automatically puts things on. So I'm going to say, I want this to end after, let's say after four or occurrences. I can say where. Now, this could be set up as a location or a room, but we are going to say Starbucks, and it's going to pick a local Starbucks for us. Now, if I want, I could send a Google Hangouts video call. Maybe I, I, I want to just have a breakfast video call with mom. I can certainly do that. Description here is Very simple. You can make a description for other people to see that. Now, which calendar do I want? This is important. I want to make sure that I'm adding it to the proper calendar. Perhaps that's the calendar for my name. Perhaps that's the calendar for a building or a resource or a conference room or a library. You want to make sure it's going on the same calendar. Now, each calendar in Google Calendars has its own color, but if you want to change this event to a specific calendar color, you certainly can do that. Perhaps all of the events in your department or in your family are green, but the stuff with your boss might be red or pink or something to that effect. When do you want to be notified? I want to be notified by an email or a text notification 10 minutes before or anything. I got minutes, hours, days, weeks, and I can certainly add a notification. Let's say I wanted to do it 40 minutes ahead and 10 minutes ahead. I can certainly do that. On my calendar, it's going to show me as available. 
or busy. Generally, I want to keep that as busy. And under visibility, do I want to make this available to the public or do I want to keep this private? You'll notice when I say public or private, that changes a few things down here with your settings. Over here, I want to invite a guest so I can invite mom. Now, I don't have her information on here, but this is where you can put an email address in. And I can certainly add, and I want my guests to modify the event, invite others, or see the guest list. So I have everything here that I want to do to save. I can discard my changes, or I can also delete. Now, this button here says more actions. I can change the owner of this event, or I can duplicate this event. So let's see, I'm going to save this first, and you can see that it's on this calendar here. But if I wanted to, I can actually duplicate this event, save it, and now you can see it's on two different calendars. Now, I only have one major calendar here, but you can see this might be on the Jeff calendar, and this might be on, say, the conference room calendar or the Starbucks calendar in this case. Um, if I wanted to, I can move these things around independently. So maybe I want breakfast here and breakfast here. But you can see if I go into month view, I've got those three or four reoccurring events with breakfast with mom. So you can see how those re reoccurring events happen. Let's say that I wanted to print this calendar out. I can simply come over here to more and hit print. And if I go to print, it's only going to print that week. I can, of course, change the print range. I can change the font size. I can change some of the styles here, and I can hit print. If I want to do it as a month calendar, I have to switch over to month calendar and then hit print. So now you can see I have my month calendar here. So that's really, really important. I know many times people print, and then they want to do a, a different view. You need to come in here. So here's my agenda view. And I hit print, and you can see all the events happening here from this particular print range. So that is a quick way of how to create an event in Google Calendar. And if I want, I can switch back over here to today. I can go to month view, and I can see how I have my Google Calendar uh, items open. One last thing I want to share in this video is how to work with multiple calendars or how to turn calendars on and off. You'll notice over here we have things like holiday calendars and then we have our personal calendar and birthday calendars. So you can see we have some holidays here and we have our personal calendar here. If I don't want to see the holidays, I can simply toggle this on and off. Now it's a bit confusing. Right now you can see the calendar is off. There's nothing here. But if I hover over this, you'll notice that the color comes back on that calendar. Don't be confused just because you're hovering your mouse over and you see it looking like it's been checked off. Make sure that you actually check the box to have that. So if I don't want to see any of my Jeff events and I just want to see the, the calendars for holidays, I certainly can do that. And that is an introduction to Google Calendar.